Hi, my name is Norma Maldonado and I'm here to read The Velveteen Rabbit on behalf of United Way of Greater Atlanta. This book was written by Marjorie Williams. The Velveteen Rabbit. There was once a velveteen rabbit and in the beginning he was really splendid. He was fat and bunchy as a rabbit should be. His coat was spotted brown and white and he had real thread whiskers and his ears were lined with pink satin. For at least two hours, the boy loved him, and then his friends arrived for his birthday party, and in the excitement of looking at all the new presents, the Velveteen Rabbit was forgotten. For a long time, the Velveteen Rabbit lived in the nursery toy cupboard, and no one thought very much about him. He was naturally shy, and being only made of Velveteen, some of the more expensive toys Loved him. The mechanical toys thought they were very superior. They looked down on the other toys and pretended they were real. The Velveteen Rabbit could not claim to be real, for he didn't know that real rabbits existed. What is real? asked the Velveteen Rabbit one day when he was lying beside Rocking Horse on the nursery room floor. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and stick out handles? Real isn't how you are made, said Rocking Horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. There was a person called Mom who ruled the nursery. Sometimes she took no notice of playing things lying about, and sometimes, for no reason whatsoever, she went swooping about like a great wind and hustled them away into cupboards. She called this tidying up, and playing things all hated it, especially the metal ones. The Velveteen Rabbit didn't mind it so much, for wherever he was thrown, he always landed softly. One evening, when the boy was going to bed, he couldn't find the cuddly teddy bear that always slept with him. His mom was in a hurry, and seeing that the toy cupboard door stood open, she reached inside. Here, she said, take your old bunny. He'd like to sleep with you. And she dragged the velveteen rabbit out by one ear and placed him into the boy's arms. That night, and for many nights after, the Velveteen Rabbit slept in the boy's bed. At first, he found it rather uncomfortable, for the boy hugged him very tight. He rolled over him, and sometimes he pushed him so far under the pillow that the Velveteen Rabbit could scarcely breathe. But very soon, the Velveteen Rabbit grew to like it, for the boy used to talk to him and made nice tunnels for him under the bed clothes that he said were like the burrows the real rabbits lived in. And they had splendid games together. And when the boy dropped off to sleep, the velveteen rabbit would snuggle down close under his little warm chin and dream, with the boy's hands cuddling him all night long. Soon spring came, and they spent long days together in the garden. Once, when the boy was called away suddenly to go in for dinner, the velveteen rabbit was left out on the lawn until long after dusk. The boy couldn't go to sleep without the velveteen rabbit, and Mom had to come and look for him with a flashlight. You must have your old bunny, she said. Fancy all the fuss for a toy. The boy sat up in bed and stretched out his arm. You mustn't say that, said the boy. He isn't a toy. He's real. When the velveteen rabbit heard what the boy said, he was happy, for he knew what Rocking Horse had said was true at last. The nursery magic had happened to him and he was a toy no longer. He was real. Thank you.